Hi everybody, it's Leanne Greff with tonight's Stamp With Me Live. Today we're going to make explosion cards. So a little bit of business to do first, but this is a fun technique that isn't very hard either. So um, let me know you're here. Let me know where you're from. If it's your first time here, I will um, get my laptop synced up and we'll do a prize drawing. Oh, I'm already synced up. What do you know? Karen, first one here from cold Iowa. Yeah, it's cold here in North Dakota. I think the high these days uh, around three three below, was it yesterday or is it tomorrow? We are, I, I don't even want to look at the temperatures because it just makes you kind of mad <laughs> or upset. So we have about a week to go through with this cold spell. And uh, yeah, I just don't want to even know what the temperature is. I'm avoiding the news. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, um, it's, it's cold here. All right. Okay. Thanks. Looks like a lot of people are joining. Hopefully some of you are getting your designer paper ready. If while I'm doing that, um, <laughs> I bet recess duty is miserable, Lori. Yeah. Yeah. Just how, how many minutes are you out there during recess? Hopefully you don't last more than 15 minutes. It's just way too, are they even letting kids out? when it's this cold for recess. That's kind of crazy. Um, if you don't do anything and you're not gonna craft with me today, get a four inch by eight inch piece of paper. It could be copy paper. 20 minutes, huh? That's a long time in three below weather. I guess it was supposed to be get up to eight today, I think I heard, my neighbor told me. So get a four inch by eight inch piece of, of paper, whether it's copy paper or designer paper ready. So you can at least do this part that we're going to do in just a few minutes. So this is the explosion part. Once you have one, and honestly, if I were you, I would make one from copy paper or some scrap designer paper and let it, and keep it. Don't use it because um, it's so helpful to have one done so you know how to fold this and have it ready like, which one goes where and what goes where. So keep one once we're done with this, ready to go for another project. But Last uh, time we had Stamp With Me Live, we did the shaded mask, what did I call it? Mask blending technique. I just make things up. I never know what the real name is for anything. I'm too busy to look it up. And honestly, when you're looking for a name of a fold or a technique, how do you even search it if you don't know the name? So it can get a little bit crazy trying to find names for techniques. So I end up just making my own, my own up. But a lot of people uh, posted their uh, mask blending cards and I gave you a month to get one, in, well, almost a month. I think it was three and a half weeks or four weeks to get one posted so you could um, get in on the door prize drawing. And the winner is for everybody who uh, posted a card using this technique since we had uh, Monday Night Live. Uh, four weeks ago was Daphne Haston. So congratulations, Daphne. I don't think she's on yet or else I missed her or she hasn't said anything, but um, I'll be sending her some embellishments in the mail. So awesome. Thank you everybody who posted your project. So remember if you share your explosion card by February 26th, you'll be in the door prize drawing for some embellishments from me. So, all right, let's get started. I'm going to um, start with this. This is my sample from last time. So I will have this on my blog, uh, I think tomorrow, and also the card I'm making. And there will be a, a, a project sheet that you can download that has the products, the measurements, the template, the directions, everything on here on my blog. Now, if you haven't been to my blog, it's flowerbug.net. That is my, my stamping blog where you can get um, all of the ideas and the videos that I usually post. So yeah, you do have your sample. It is, um, it's smart to keep your samples of these. Okay, so this is four inches by eight inches. All right, let's get my paper trimmer out. Now I'm going to be using the scoring blade Okay, I'm gonna move this up and use the top. So we need to first score two inches, four inches, and six inches. That has to be the first step. Okay, so that, we'll do four inches. 
and then we'll do six inches. Make sure that that is at the, yeah. Because once it gets to the edge, sometimes I get confused on if that's really six, but it says it is. So, okay, so now we have, I'm just gonna fold these so you can kind of see them, all right? So now we have to make an X. It's as simple as that, as just scoring an X. And it does help to, at least in that center fold, bend that. So now you have to bring the point to the center fold and score that. Okay, so that's that way. Then we will do the same. There's my, and if you need a pencil mark or something, honestly, it's, it's hard to do this with dark paper um, because you can't always see um, your lines. Okay, we'll just keep it this way. So point to the center, the four inch mark. Okay, and I'm not pressing hard on here. I don't want to cut my paper. Designer paper is much thinner than cardstock. And honestly, I would not recommend this technique with cardstock. I think the inside of your card would be really thick. And already, this does not want to stay flat. So that's why a lot of people with explosion cards will either tie a ribbon or they will make a belly band. I did not. Um, I'm just leaving it open for now. Um, I think it's fine to even send it this way because honestly, they're going to want to leave it on display like that so you can kind of see the fun inside. So it doesn't bother me that it pops up. It might bother you. So belly band or a ribbon. Okay, so then you just want to burnish and I'm not gonna burnish really heavily uh, because I'm not sure which way they are going to go yet. <laughs> So, and I'm gonna use the light side for your sake. Now I do know, let me get this back out there. I know that you, all, remember those little things we played with as kids? Get your fingers in there and this isn't like that, but it reminds me of that. You need this outer triangle to attach to the card front. So that is the only place this attaches to your card. So I know, that these are going to be what I call innies. And I believe, yeah. See, I'm getting confused, there we go. So this has to be in. So you need these innies so you can have, <laughs> it gets so confusing. So you can have this nice flat part on the front. So just keep in mind, you need something to put your fingers in or you need um, this flat part on the front. So that's what attaches to the card. So once you have that done, then you know, I'm just gonna refold those. You know that these go in. So as you're looking at it, see how that works? So these two inch and six inch actually end up folding inwards. So there's no other real way to help you learn this except to make one and keep it as a sample. Honestly, there's, it's just not easy to, to, um, to do, to remember until you do, you make one. It's the only way I can tell you. So copy paper or, um, Old, old designer paper, or, you know, if you're brave like me, I tend to use uh, maybe celebration paper or something that is not a favorite, that I don't really care too much if I ruin one. Um, okay, all right, so that's, that's that. That's how you do that. So basically, once again, you're just going to score two inch, four inch, six inch, and then make two X's, very simple. Then you simply, and I actually did do this one ahead of time. So we're gonna fold it again, see if I can do a little bit. Ooh, I can see I scored a little bit heavy. Lucky this one is a, is a scrap piece. So we know these are going to be in. I'm gonna first score on, or fold on the score lines. So these will be in. So does that help when you're holding it like that to do this? then lay that down. 
Okay, I'm going to turn it over. So, make my folds. Okay, this is going to go in. Hopefully that is going to help you. So how many of you are making this with me tonight? How many of you are scoring or folding and, and saving this so you have a sample? Now I know that this is, this is recorded, so it'll be available on my uh, YouTube channel, which is new. It's under my name, Leanne Graff. I do have a new YouTube channel since my other one was um, hacked and I lost it. So that's very disappointing, but I'm starting over and I've been slowly uploading a lot of my cards. So to put this together, you have to have a gatefold card. Now this is five and a half by eight and a half, and you need to score at two and one eighth. And I don't score on this side, it's some kind of six and five eighths, but I just turn it and do another two and one eighth. So that's how you get an exact um, gatefold card. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do I want to use this side in here? It's kind of blah. Do I want to turn it over or do I want to use this? This one has a little tear there, but yeah, it does show. So I just, I guess I'm going to have to use this one. Okay, or I could, no, I'm going to just use this one. All right, to put it together, the most important thing is to get this flat edge with this flat edge, okay? So what I tend to do, and I like to use liquid glue, and just at, just on this flat area, nothing else is glued here. So then what I'm going to do is position this so it's approximately even top to bottom and I'm going to approximate this. And the wonderful thing about this glue is that it's slidable for a few seconds. So now I can make sure that is pretty close to the edge of that card. Okay, so that's the first one. Now this is not the same length. This is eight inch, this is eight and a half. So this card float, or this explosion part floats. It does not, it be. it's not adhered to anything. Let me get the other one out. So you can kind of see it's floating. It's only adhered on that little, let's close this back up, on this little triangle. Okay, now to do this part, we're going to just add adhesive on here and close the card and hope that that it's and it's not quite perfect so I'm gonna do it again see if that's gonna match up any better yeah okay so now my edges are pretty even and they close nice and flat so the important thing when you're using this glue is when you're doing a fun fold is to close it make it mind <laughs> so I like to say make the paper mind and press it and bone fold it and then while it's laying flat it should all be good and if this wasn't that perfect you know it's it's a handmade card it's okay don't you know don't stress about that so there's our there's our explosion isn't that fun so i showed you two ways now on the front of the card i mentioned the pieces are uh, one and seven eighths so on here these will be it here that's really pretty actually i like this is petal pink that i'm using and they this is one and seven eighths by five and a quarter that is the measurement for the designer paper layer on here it is a really fun card i mean think about giving this to kids or men, I mean, men don't care about cards, but if they get something like this, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna think, wow, that's you're really clever. So there we go. There's our gatefold. So on the front of this, I did a circle. On this one, I'm going to do a oval, an oval. So I'm using this stamp set, the framed florets, and mossy meadow ink okay so we're going to use my favorite because i need a lot of thank you cards 
cards usually is the thank you with all my heart. So I'm just making sure I don't have any kitty hairs. I have to look up to the light because of my bifocals. <laughs> it's so great to have vision issues. One more time. Oh, I see something. Hold on a minute. Okay. Just giving a little huff. Give me a stamp on the bottom this time because it's such a pretty set. And I did do some fussy cutting of the flowers because I'm going to do that on there. And I'm gonna pop it up side. Okay, so um, fussy cutting these flowers is not that hard. It really isn't. It takes me less than a minute to do that, that little um, flower. I don't know if I'm going to have, we'll see how that looks, but I think it's going to be too busy to put on there. So, ooh, that's a pretty card. All right, so when you do this, you only want to adhere your element to one side. So I'm going to add adhesive to one side and decide if I want it high or low and attempt to center it. Okay. There you go. So now the inside of this element that you do, now there is a full a score line in there, but once you add your layered elements to that, it holds that nice and flat. So you don't have to worry about, um, about it looking like it was folded in the center. Okay, I've got some clips of coral here, and I'll be sure when you're doing this, you stamp when it's on the diagonal. And if you're doing words and you have grid paper, it's helpful to either use your stamparatus or to um, use your grid paper so you can see what is straight or not. These are just a couple of the images from the stamp set, the framed florets. Now remember, you have through February 26th to share your version of this explosion card on my Stamp and Share page, so, or group, my Stamp and Share group, and I honestly should have probably done this before, because now I have not, not a lot of, well, when I open it, I guess I have a firm surface. So I'm going to put this on the inside. I like to do it um, and not hold something gluey. So this is, like I said, two and a half inch is the white and the mossy meadow is two and five eighths. And that's why I like the multi-purpose glue because I can shift this just slightly while it's drying. And do a little burnishing. Okay, and last but not least, I have some of these brushed brass butterflies. One of my favorite embellishments that you we have right now, as you can see, look at what I have left here. It's not much of this one. So let me hold this closed so you can see that I used just a couple of those. I don't have a lot of room on this one. I might just use some small ones. And that one looks good right there. And maybe one right here. Okay, there we go, done. And yes, I did do this ahead of time, but it was still really fast. You're gonna give it another try, Kathleen? Awesome, well, thank you, Marsha. I appreciate that um, that you like the cards. It is very, very simple when you're using the template. So this is the template for the explosion card. And once you have this, please save one in your little idea area so you have one ready that you know how it's scored, how it's folded, and they're just really fun cards to make and to receive. So this is the favorite flowers designer paper that is free during celebration, and it is while supplies last. I don't know if everybody knows that, 
but celebration products are um, while they last. So anything could go out of stock at any time. We just never know um, until they tell us. So thanks, Doris. I'm glad you like them. Thanks, Katie. Yep. I'm glad you like a challenge. It is not hard, as you can see. It's simple, very simple measurements. And as long as you have something to score with, um, you're good to go. Now, if you don't have a scoring blade on your paper trimmer, and maybe you have one of these, or maybe you have a ruler, so just um, even a ruler is fine to make notches and lines and press with some kind of a, a stylus um, or a bone, fill, bone folder. It would be just fine to use a bone folder too on a piece of maybe a couple pieces of paper so it gives a little bit so you can get some scoring in there. Yeah, exactly, Karen. Once you get this, you're going to want to make more. I've made different types of explosion cards, but I have not made this type before. So um, it's it's fun. And it's not terribly thick. I don't think I'd have to send if I added more embellishments that are higher, but these, these butterflies are nice and flat. I don't think I'd have to use extra postage on this. It's still pretty flat. So, all right, I'm waiting to see who's gonna make one and who's gonna post it in the Stamp and Share group. Now remember, I have a business page. Oh, let me get my little handout here. Okay. These are my groups. So I have three groups that have the name Flower Buds in them. And Flower Buds is my team, my, my, my um, downline, I guess you'd say. And then Flower Bug Stamp and Share is where you all can post what you're making. But this is where um, this challenge will be. It's going to say, let's share on it. And the Flower Bugs Ink Spot is where I do my videos. And that is my business page where I promote and do videos. So that's kind of the explanation of my three uh, Facebook business page and groups that I have. So hopefully that's helpful. All right. I appreciate you joining me. I will be live tomorrow with three really cool projects. And um, I'll see you then tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central Time on my Flower Bugs Ink Spot page. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good night. Bye-bye.